Long time no see. I've got a really cool vintage toy to show you guys today. Uh, this is a Tomitronic Pac-Man. It was made around 1982 and it was another one of the many handheld and portable electronic games based on Bally Midway's Pac-Man arcade game. Uh, an arcade game that very much defined video gaming for a generation. And of course, uh, this particular portable Pac-Man game is very cool because it's based on a vacuum fluorescent display. This is my second vintage toy based on a vacuum fluorescent display. My first one, which I still have, is my Entex Pac-Man 2. I've had this for nine years now. This was made in 1981 making it 40 years old, which is amazing, and it still works just fine. I last played it about a year and a half ago. I have a video, I, I have a few videos on this, if you're interested to see that. And then I've got uh, this guy from around the turn of the century. This is MGA's uh, Color FX2 Pac-Man, which is based on a color LCD display. And then I just recently picked up this guy, and I picked it up because it was cheap. And it was cheap because it was broken. It was sold non-working, parts of repair. And I got it working. What was wrong with it? Well, long story short, uh, corroded battery terminals. But it was a little bit of a process to uh, isolate just where the connection problem was. And I made a series of short videos on Twitter showing my process of diagnosing the issue with this thing and uh, fixing the problem. Let me show you that right now. This came in the mail today. Can we fix it? Let's find out. All four battery terminals are... Well, three of the four battery terminals are quite corroded. The fourth one's minorly corroded. I'll take a Scotch-Brite pad and uh, see if I can clean them up. It ain't perfect still, but it should be good enough for this thing to work if that's all that's wrong. Let's find out. Nope. Still no go. There's inside the unit. That nice vacuum fluorescent display. Can we see who made the display? Uh, NEC. Very cool. I didn't know NEC was in the vacuum fluorescent display business. All right, uh, well, these wires are still intact. This bridge, series bridge, looks like hell. But I'll test the continuity anyway and make sure that uh, six volts is appearing here. Well, there's your problem, Cap. It's still the battery compartment. You can see the voltage there is sort of all over the place. It's definitely not six volts. It should actually be 6.4 volts because those are new batteries. And if I turn the unit on, it drops right to nothing. So we've got a high impedance in the battery compartment still, or a high resistance more correctly. So time to measure the resistance across this bridge and across other parts and uh, see what I can find. But this is good news, that it's just the battery compartment and not an electronic issue. Well, this bridge is the source of the issue. The battery terminals are riveted onto uh, this bridge piece, so because they're just riveted and not soldered or anything, there is no electrical connection anymore just all because of all the corrosion. So I've taken a wire wheel and I'm just going to solder a wire across and then hot glue this terminal back in place because I broke the rivet investigating this. And then this thing should be ready to go. Well. She ain't the tidiest looking thing in the world, but should do the job. Let's throw batteries in it and see what it does. And I won't spoil the end there, but it did turn on. And this thing has been working just fine ever since. So I'm really happy to have this and, and really excited to show you guys. This thing is pretty cool. Of course, there were a few... Uh, electronic Pac-Man games in the 80s. They all had unique features to their design and their gameplay and this one's no different. First of all, look at this thing. So many electronic toys of the time were, uh, you know, cuboid rectangular slabs. 
Uh, especially portable games based on arcade games because the companies would often design them to look like tiny arcade machines. A good example of that is Coleco's mini arcade series, which did include a Pac-Man model and a Ms. Pac-Man model. But Tomy went a completely different direction. Uh, they made this thing round and yellow. It actually looks like Pac-Man itself. <laughs> and, uh... Yeah, it's a pretty radical looking toy, especially for the era that it came out of. It almost looks like sort of a UFO, like 1960s futuristic space looking thing, actually, which is pretty cool. Physically, this thing's in pretty good shape. You can see the sticker's a bit damaged there. The display lens is good, though. No cracks or anything. I noticed it, so it's nice and shiny, nice and clear, you can see. And it definitely needed it because it was a little bit scratched up. And yeah, all the buttons and switches and everything work uh, fine. I, I really got a good deal on this. Uh, it's now worth way more than what I paid for it. Not that that matters. I just care that it, it works. And indeed, it works perfect. And it's very fun to play. And, and we will uh, do some gameplay uh, in the last segment of this video. I find it kind of interesting that... Uh, a lot of Tomy's toys at the time were just branded Tomy, but this one was branded Tomytronic, and it's got a little Japanese word mark there for some reason, even though this was sold in the United States. Uh, very interesting. I'm not sure why uh, why they have that Japanese word mark in the Tomytronic name. Um, Tomy was a Japanese company. And uh, they did make some toys just for the Japanese market, and I believe they were usually under the Tomitronic name. But uh, toys meant for the North American market were usually just branded Tomi. But this was sold in the Japanese market, and so maybe that's why uh, it has uh, that branding on it. Funny story, uh, in Japan, this toy is called Puckman. Reason being is that... Uh, 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 Namco, who developed Pac-Man, um, the, the original developers of, of Pac-Man, uh, Namco is a Japanese company. Uh, they licensed it to Bally Midway for the North American market. And Pac-Man's original name was supposed to be Puck-Man. Makes sense. He's shaped like a puck. Uh, but when uh, Bally Midway got the licensing writes, they were like, yeah, we're going to name it something else, because Pally Midway figured that those darn North American kids were going to deface the P in Puckman and turn it into an F. And so they figured they better change it to Pac-Man. And that's why in North America, the game is called Pac-Man and not Puckman. Although I do have to say, I have a feeling that a game named Fuck Man uh, may have earned quite a few quarters indeed, but we'll never know. <laughs> but anyway, this toy was sold and branded as Puck Man in Japan. Uh, in the European market, it was called Munch Man. Uh, I guess uh, to avoid having to license the name from Bally Midway, not sure, but it was called Munch Man. Uh, overseas. The controls of the unit are pretty simple. You have a four-way directional pad to control Pac-Man with. You have your on-off power switch and a switch to uh, switch between the two skill levels which Tomy calls amateur and pro. And that's it. The game starts the instant you turn it on. You set your skill level and then you turn it on and the game begins. I'm not sure if this is the only difference between amateur and pro, but in amateur uh, you start off with two, two ghosts in the maze and then later you get three ghosts. But if you choose the pro skill level, you start right off uh, with three ghosts. I'm not sure if pro also makes the ghosts faster or smarter. I haven't uh, studied the game enough to find that out. Looking around the back, we have a DC input. It's corroded. I don't care. I'm never going to use it. Uh, it's 6 volts. I don't know what the polarity is. Sorry, I never bothered to look at that because I never plan on using it. But it does warn you, severe damage will result if incorrect AC adapter is used. 
See instructions for recommended adapters. Although I do recall inside there is a diode coming right off the power supply, so this might be reverse polarity protected. But again, I haven't studied it enough. And then on the bottom, there used to be an instruction label here. It's long gone on this unit, but that's okay. And here it says, Tomy, made in Japan. Interestingly, no uh, copyright information for Bally Midway, although perhaps that was on this sticker. Your battery compartment, push the door back, flip it up. Four C batteries feeds this thing. Uh, I have these uh, carbon zinc batteries that I bought years ago, like two or three years ago, and just never used. I just took them out of the package just for this thing. And uh, I don't know how much gameplay I've put into this thing so far. Probably a good hour, hour and a half. And those batteries are still doing just fine. People like to characterize games based on vacuum fluorescent displays as uh, just eating through batteries like crazy, but they really don't, especially with modern batteries. Uh, modern alkaline batteries probably power this thing for hours and hours and hours. And you know, a game doesn't last that long. And you know, rechargeable batteries will do it just fine as well. It's, it's really not a big deal feeding this thing batteries versus running it on the AC adapter. But to each their own. Uh, let's turn this thing on. Uh, I'm going to switch it to the amateur skill level. That's what we'll play it on later. Although I normally play it on the pro skill level. Uh, the game will start as soon as I turn it on, so I'll just have to uh, explain through the beeping what's going on. First of all, look at this beautiful display. It'll come up once the music ends. And there it is. Oh, cameras. This display is beautiful. It's got three colors. It's got the natural blue-green color for the maze and the dots. It's got red for the ghosts and the power pellets, and then the score and Pac-Man are this yellowish green color, which I really enjoy. There's no color filtering on this display. Uh, the colors you're seeing are the phosphors themselves. And, and so really nice display. It's not the biggest vacuum fluorescent display you ever saw on a toy, but uh, now this is interesting. Pac-Man's been sitting here and the ghosts haven't attacked him. Oh, I wonder if I just found a deficiency in the programming of this game. Look at that. I'm just sitting there and the ghosts aren't getting me. Maybe that's by design. Maybe it's a programming deficiency, but either way, that's pretty funny. It's actually extremely convenient for me to explain what's going on. So as you can see, one big difference uh, to this game uh, versus the Entex Pac-Man 2 is that the Entex Pac-Man 2 was based on the real Pac-Man maze, but this thing is based on a completely different maze. It's much smaller and simpler than the regulation Pac-Man maze. It's got two sets of escape tunnels instead of one, and it's only got a few dots and just two power pellets. And you'll notice that uh, some of the dots are in groups of two, like there's two groups of two over here, and there's two groups of two dots over here. Pac-Man in this game actually eats those dots, those groups of two dots, uh, he, eat, he eats them both at once. Um, so if I just move over here, which will probably uh, screw up the uh, little programming deficiency I've got going on here. You can see I ate both of those dots at once. Each dot is worth two points, but those groups of two dots are worth four points. You can see the score at the top there in that yellow, nice yellowish green phosphor. Um, so it, it's very interesting that they bothered making those two dots because uh, as far as the gameplay is concerned, they might as well just be one dot. So it's kind of funny. You do have the ghost house in the center. And another difference uh, that this has from the Entex Pac-Man 2 is you actually have the testicles that you can eat for extra points. They show up in that, whoops, in that little cavity right there. 
after you've eaten so many dots. Uh, they show up twice per level, so you eat the testicles when they show up and you get extra points. Very nice. The Entex Pac-Man 2 doesn't have that. Also notice the rather funny soundtrack to this game. It's just a ticking sound, a constant tick, tick, tick. And when you eat a power pellet, the ticking uh, speeds up in the ghost flash. It might be hard for you to hear. I've actually modified this to make it quieter. This thing was loud as heck, like so many of these uh, electronic toys from the 80s. This thing was just so loud. And so I actually modified it in the same way that I modified the Entex Pac-Man 2. I opened it up and I deliberately damaged the piezo buzzer. Now, some of you might not like th the fact that I've damaged, deliberately damaged, part of a vintage toy, but the thing is, I'm never going to sell this thing. Uh, my plan is to be the last owner of this thing ever. I'll have this thing until either it dies or I die. Um, and so, as long as I'm going to be this thing's last owner, I might as well make it uh, work the way I would like it to. And uh, it was just too loud for my liking. And so I took the piezo buzzer, bent it a bit, and that made it much quieter. And I find it much more enjoyable now. Now, here's the strangest thing about this game. And I, I thought it was, I used to think it was kind of stupid, but now that I own it, now that I own one and I've played it, I actually think it's kind of cool. It really adds to the challenge. You can only eat dots when you're moving left. You notice Pac-Man is uh, facing to the left. Well, you only eat dots when you're moving to the left. It's so funny. So I'll move here and eat uh, another set of dots. Or actually, I'll move to the right over these dot over this dot here. Nope, that ghost just got me. Let's see if I can demonstrate moving to the right over a dot. There. <laughs> I moved over that dot and didn't need it. It's so funny. But it really makes the gameplay unique. Uh, a unique way that the game controls is that Pac-Man does not keep moving once you start him moving. He only moves for as long as you hold down the directional button. As soon as you let go, he stops. And you can actually tap the button if you want. Of course, he only moves at a uh, maximum speed. But yeah, you have to either hold down the button. If I let go, he just stops. You can stop him anywhere you want. And there's the testicles you can see right there. I'm going to eat them for extra. Nope, they just disappeared. They, dis <laughs> they disappear after a few seconds. So that's a look at this thing before we do a full gameplay. Uh, what else can I say about this thing? It's based on a uh, NEC D553. Uh, it's what we would call today a microcontroller. But uh, back when this thing was made, the NEC D553 was marketed as a computer because it was 1982 and anything with three transistors in it was a computer. So yeah, this thing has an NEC D553 uh, microcontroller. It consists of a 4-bit microprocessor that runs at 750 kilohertz, I think, or somewhere around there. Uh, it's got like 256 bytes of, or 256 bits of RAM, and then like 2 kilobits of ROM, and you know, just a really, really basic, uh, basically a calculator chip. And that's how most of these games were made. So very cool. So that's about all there is to say about this thing. Uh, let me set the camera up on a tripod, and then we'll actually play a full game. All right, I've got the camera set up here. I actually have the microphone unmounted from the camcorder and placed uh, right on the table next to it so that you can hopefully hear the sounds better. I'm gonna be playing in the amateur skill level mode. Let's play some Pac-Man. All right, 
and oh, I gotta turn the display indicators off on my camcorder here so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, okay, there's really no way I can do that, so I guess I'm gonna look, uh, crane my head around here, but let's do this. The ghost got a head start on me, unfortunately. Oh, there's the testicles. Got the testicles for a hundred points. So when the ghosts come up on your right side, that's when you die. Oh, there's the testicles again. I'm probably too late to get them. Yeah. And there's one more dot. Oh, this ghost is gonna... I'm playing do -si do with this ghost. There we go. Alright. On to the second maze, which it labels P2. Now we're getting it. It's nice that the game pauses for a second. Gives you a little bit of a breather. Let's see if I can eat a ghost here. There we go, got a ghost for a hundred points. Testicles are there again. Got a ghost. Got the testicles. Oh, we're racking up quite a lot of points right off the bat. Alright, let's finish off this maze. Third maze, I still have all three of my lives. Two ghosts. As you can see, I've got kind of a pattern here. I've played this thing enough that I've pretty much got a default pattern, a default route that I always take. We get 200 points for the testicles now. Oops. I wasn't thinking that one through. See if I'll see if I can wait for the ghost to come by. Whoop! Almost screwed up again. Two hundred points. There we go. Can I get the second ghost? No, I'm not going to try. All right. I need to put my camera on manual focus. I did not realize that it was going to be focus hunting. So sorry about that. Notice we have three ghosts now. There's the testicles. Am I going to have enough time? Yep. Yeah. There. I just slapped the camera into manual focus mode. Things are getting a little hairier now. Uh-oh. There we go. Ah, oh, I couldn't get any... Ah, uh, I left the power pellet for last. Oh, well. So we got a pretty good game going on here. I won't have to do a take two because I overly sucked. Can I get a ghost? Nope. It is hard to talk and play at the same time. 400 points for the testicles now. Oh. <laughs> that got hairy. 
Da. Here we go. And when you finish the fifth maze, it tells you good. Which I think is a cute little uh, thing they added in there. Did I get an extra life? I thought I only had one life left. If I did, I didn't know this game gave you extra lives. 400 points. So once you get into the later levels and the points for the testicles go way up. Uh oh. You can really rack up a lot of points very quickly. Got a ghost. And we'll finish it off. Alright. Seventh maze. <laughs> oh, can I get the testicles? Yeah, and I'm probably gonna die now. Yep. <laughs> That's it! And from there... It just flashes uh, your score and what maze you were on. And that's it. All you can do is uh, turn off the game. Yeah, this is nice. This is fun. Really unique gameplay. Um, and even though the maze is small and there's not many dots and only three ghosts, uh, the gameplay is very addictive nonetheless. Uh, I've really gotten into this thing where, you know, I'll end up playing it for like half an hour at a time. Um, it really is a good time killer. Uh, despite, you know, the lack of uh, complexity compared to other Pac-Man games. It really is a very nice game. And that, my friends, is Tomitronic's Pac-Man from 1982. What a nice game! I really like this! Uh, I ended up liking it better than I thought I would. And I was really lucky to be able to get this for such a good price because it needed repair to get working. And I'm glad I was able to figure out how to repair it. What a nice game. Uh, it was nine years ago when I got my first vacuum fluorescent display based game. And now I have my second one, nine years later. And I really hope I have the opportunity to collect more in the future because I just love these 1970s and 1980s vacuum fluorescent display based games. There is nothing like them and uh, I think uh, the Gen Xers are really lucky that they got to uh, grow up with these things back in the day. But I'm really lucky to get to have this one and to show you guys it today. So thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. I really appreciate your guys' continued patience and support. Uh, things in my life uh, have been kind of crazy in the past few months, which is why I just haven't gotten videos out. I do lots of live streams because they're easy to set up. I just do them, you know, right on a whim. Uh, there's no setup. There's no editing. I just do it and so it's really easy to do the live streams but I have been having difficulty finding the time and energy to do regular videos like this but I'm really glad I got to show you guys this one today so thank you and I'll see you next time